Well, good morning and welcome to worship on this glorious winter's morning. Earlier on, Kathy and I were watching a sunrise through the trees at the back of our house, and the, uh, it's a spectacular sunrise this morning, and the squirrels were running about in the trees, and I was thinking to myself that life might be a bit difficult at the moment. In fact, for a lot of people, probably very difficult. But God is with us. God is with us. The month of January is often a time when we share together in a covenant service that special time when we rededicate ourselves to God by following the format that John Wesley set out all those years ago. Since we're unable to gather together in person and share communion, which is such an intricate part of the covenant service, we've decided as a circuit to hold off celebrating our covenants in full until we can gather together again, a time that we're all looking forward to. In the meantime, today's service, which would have been our covenant service, is going to contain some aspects of the rededication. We have an opportunity to say the words of the covenant prayer in our homes and to make them our own. We're very grateful to the Reverend uh, Catherine Bostead for sharing her sermon with us. And so to our first hymn, after which Cathy will uh, lead us in prayers of adoration and confession. So our first hymn is singing the faith, singing the faith four, four, three, come let us sing. of adoration God of heaven whom we adore how can we worship you 
Lord, whose love has never failed us, how can we respond as we should? You are totally committed to us. What can we do in return? We will give our best, not our second best. We will give you our heart and not be half-hearted. We will give you our time and not our spare time. We will give you ourselves that we may become your people. Amen. Prayer of Confession. <clears throat> Gracious God, your love is strong and faithful. You never stop loving us. Our love for you is weak and fickle, and we often fall short on what we have committed ourselves to be and do. Forgive us for our reluctance to follow Christ, our half-hearted worship, our failures in caring, service and witness, and our, our unwillingness to challenge injustice. Have mercy on us, O God, and renew in us both the desire and the ability to be people of love. Thank you for your gracious words. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Now Peggy will do the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 7 and 16 to 19 entitled Restoration and Protection Promised. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honoured, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And the second reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, titled Jesus the True Vine. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we sing hymn number, which I've lost, 489, All I Once Held Dear. Joy, my righteousness, 
and I love you, Lord.
and I love you, Lord. The best of all is, God is with us. And do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The eagle eyed among you will have spotted that these quotations are printed on our Methodist membership card for this year. And I hope that you might have your membership card with you so that you can look at it while you listen. The best of all is, God is with us, are the last words of John Wesley, spoken on his deathbed. It was as if he was summing up his remarkable life. And of all that he'd done and achieved, all the sermons preached and books published, the thousands converted to Christ, the Methodist movement founded. The best of all is that God is with us. And of course that's the message of Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us. So a good message for us to take with us into this new year now just 10 days old. The past year has been incredibly difficult for everyone and it stretched our faith and our hope to its very limits at times. And this new year is proving to be difficult already too with another period of lockdown and students and school children back to online learning from home and the NHS under severe pressure. It can be very difficult to remain hopeful and positive. So how can our Bible passages give us hope and renew our faith as we look ahead to what this year might bring? Let's look at our Isaiah reading. I am doing a new thing. In verse 1 we hear, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. This is an astonishing promise to hold on to as we begin this new year. We belong to God. He knows each of us by name. He loves us and cherishes us. And the next few verses describe in rather dramatic language how God will demonstrate his love and protection. He will be with us when we pass through waters. The rivers will not sweep over us, will not be burned in the fire. All very dramatic. But the essence is that we need not be afraid, for God is with us, because he loves us. And in the latter part of the reading, God speaks about looking forward. Forget the former things. Do not dwell in the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Of course, we don't want to completely forget what has gone before, for that is what has formed us and we can learn from previous experience. So perhaps the key is do not dwell in the past. Don't be continually thinking back to how much better things used to be. This last year has been so difficult. We've missed out on so much and been stressed and stretched in ways that we had not experienced before. But here, I think, God is encouraging us to look forward with hope 
to a new thing that he's doing. Just as spring flowers are beginning to show their shoots in the cold ground and soon new flowers will appear. Just as evidence of new life will soon be all around us. I believe that God wants to do a new thing for each one of us. New growth in our faith. A new calling to follow as we respond to God. And a new thing in our church life as we reassess our priorities and listen for what God wants us to do. What exciting new things has God planned for us this year? Let's take a look now at our John reading about abiding in God. This is a passage that we often use in our covenant service. And the vine and the branches remind us of the importance of abiding in or remaining in God. There's a reference to pruning too, for unfruitful branches are thrown away and burnt. But the emphasis here is on looking forward to new growth and plentiful fruit. The growth and the fruit here is personal. It's about the growth in faith that we each experience and the fruit, the good things that we will see in our own lives if we abide and remain in God, if we keep close to him and base our lives on him. That growth could be a conviction that God is calling us to a specific task or action within the life of the church. It could be that we're given the determination and courage to endure a particular situation because we're close to God. Or it could be that we become more like Christ and display more of his qualities in our lives. Even though this growth is personal, of course, if each one of us are growing in our faith and bearing fruit in our lives, then our church community as a whole will be growing and bearing fruit too. So how can we abide in God this new year? Well, we have some helpful prompts with our membership cards and the Methodist Way of Life postcards. The Methodist membership card is a reminder of what it means to be a Methodist. The personal information on one side includes your name. And for the people at Wokingham, please know that I prayed for you as I wrote your name on the card. And there's my signature, your pastoral visitor's name and the name of your local church community. But this card is a reminder that you're part of a bigger organisation, part of the Methodist Church in Britain and throughout the world. On this side too, there are two quotations. The one from John Wesley, The best of all is, God is with us. And the verses from Isaiah about God doing a new thing. You might like to memorise these quotations as they guide and direct your thinking throughout this year. On the other side of the card is a reminder of what it means to be a Methodist. It's a reminder of our calling and the different areas of our commitment to worship, learning and caring, service and evangelism. And you should have also a postcard with the Methodist way of life. And this is simply an invitation to live deeper as a Methodist, as it embodies the elements of our calling into everyday life. It's not a rule of life. It's not a set of instructions that we're bound by. It's more like a trellis or a framework for us to use 
to help our faith to grow and to support others in their faith development too. That's why it says, as far as we are able, with God's help, we will. And then lists the sort of things that we should be aiming for in our daily lives if we want our faith to grow and if we want to live out what it means to be a Methodist. Things like praying each day, learning more about our faith, helping others and sharing our faith with others. And the other side of the card has some questions that we can ask ourselves to offer a bit of a challenge and to encourage us to go deeper. Perhaps you could challenge yourself with one of the questions each day or each week. You could write your answer in a prayer diary or a journal, or maybe you could discuss it with a church friend. Put the card where you can see it often. Take it and use it as a tool to help you on your faith journey this year. As we begin this new year, with all the challenges and opportunities that it brings, as we faithfully live out lives that are pleasing to God by following a Methodist way of life, let's remember that we're loved and cherished by God. Let's look out for the new thing that God is doing and remember that best of all is God is with us. Amen. As an act of dedication, we're going to say our covenant prayer together. And as we pray our covenant prayer, we are reminded that this means we're content that God appoint us our place and work and that he himself be our reward. For Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. So we say together, I am no longer my own but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours, so be it. And the covenant now made on earth let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Loving Lord, once more we come before you in prayer, asking on behalf of those with no voice and ourselves. So many problems in our world at the moment. Disease, not just the fight against the latest virus, but ongoing perhaps forgotten problems caused through bad water, malnutrition, lack of medication. The list is endless. Help us in, our, in whatever way we can to help raise awareness and funds to eradicate this. Abuse of power and people. 
countries who have vast divides between rich and poor, not only abroad, but sadly areas in our own country where job losses are causing tremendous hardship. We thank you for the work which is being done by food banks and other agencies, especially thinking of the move to make sure children do not go hungry. The climate change and all who think it isn't their problem help educate the countries and people to start and care more for our earth and help to make it productive once more by utilising the land we have to be and become more self-efficient. We, we think of Zimbabwe, once a flourishing, fertile country, now barren through neglect of the land. Please let people recognise the opportunities at their own front doors. During this latest lockdown, we think of all who live alone, especially without technology. If they are not able to have any interaction with other people, their mental health could suffer. Please help us to reach out to anyone we know who is in need like this and do our best to help. For all who work on the front line, the health carers in hospitals and surgeries, care homes, schools, shops, collecting our rubbish and delivering post, and all others whose jobs cannot be done from home, but which can put them at risk. Keep them all safe. We thank you for the start of the vaccine rollout and for the work of the scientists who have created this lifeline. Help people to help each other to keep safe by sticking to the rules. And soon we will come through this and meet friends and loved ones once more. For ourselves, Lord, and our families, some scattered all over the world, we ask your blessing on us all and any problems we may have. Remembering the best friend we have to talk to is you, and all our concerns can be laid at the foot of your cross and will be dealt with in your time and not when we think it is right. We thank you for all our many blessings, Lord, and ask you to walk with us day by day. Amen. And now let us join together and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing that wonderful hymn that we have had for years, Lord for the years, singing the faith 470.
prayer of blessing. May the God of heaven and earth bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us that we might know his peace and live in ways that reflect his love, now and always. Amen.